So not only am I going to be burning my finger for your entertainment because I'm heating up these frets before I pop them out, and I have to say they are coming out pretty damn easy, but uh, here we go. So, like I said, there's a little bit of a lip over here, and if I pry on it hard enough with my fingernail as I'm kind of burning my finger, ouch, the fret comes out pretty easily. Yeah, that's not supposed to happen like that.
So it looks like I will be clear cutting two guitars in the near future, this one and the Devlin, and get them both done probably at the same time, maybe. Well, the Devlin I have to do more, it's probably more assembly on the Devlin than I have to do on this one. But either way, they'll both be getting cleared at the same time. So I wanna go over a few things, and I know in the first video of unveiling, unveiling, yeah, unveiling this guitar that uh, I ended up luckily enough to help the guy out who owns it, I downed the builder quite a bit and it was kind of noticed in a few comments and stuff and I want to clear something up here now I'm not downing the builder as far as his build quality this thing is solid okay this body this neck the construction of it uh, the assembly of the body and the neck is nice I mean the guy did a beautiful job as far as you know sanding the wood down making the joints you know doing the a uh, five-piece neck, scarf joint, headstock, uh, did a beautiful job in the paint on top of the headstock and the body. And the reason why I say paint, I'll tell you in a few minutes. Beautiful job on the binding on the fretboard and a great job on doing these inlays. I've seen more inlay filler uh, on Epiphones than I do on this body here or this neck here. The guy did a beautiful job. The only thing that I have complained about was the same thing that the owner complained about was the fretwork was terrible, okay? There's no reason why I should have been able to pick a fret out with my fingernail, okay? Um, the radius of the fretboard was kind of all over the place between a 10 and a 12. That shouldn't have been like that. And I'm not gonna sit there and believe change of humidity weather is the cause of that. The fretwork itself being sticking out over the edges, uh, the letter that the owner has got conversation between the builder and himself, uh, I don't agree with that either. You know, the builder should have done something about this if it wasn't right. Now, in the letter, it says that the fret cutouts over here were the same size as the frets himself. Now, and it should have been tight, there should have been no problem. Well, the amount of glue that I cut off of here when I ended up doing my radiusing, the amount of glue that I sanded off of here was, was, was a lot to begin with. And none of it got between the fret or the tang of the fret and the fretboard itself. So it was basically just a little on the edges and that was it, it didn't seep in at all. The guy, the, owner, the uh, builder should have done something about that for the owner. Um, now, going towards the finishing part of it as far as painting goes. Beautiful job on the headstock, beautiful job on the body as far as the yellow coloring goes. Uh, and how I know that this is paint on here, not a stain or a dye, is because of how clean this line is to make it look like a binding around the headstock, which I wish he would have, the guy would have took into the body as well. That really would have made this guitar really nice. So what he did is he masked off the edge, probably using the same vinyl tape that I use, and sprayed the color on. Peeled off the tape, got a nice clean edge. Without any of the paint seeping underneath, you sprayed on light coats, and you build it up a little bit to get the darkness that the color that you want. The one thing, like I said, is I wish he would have done that with the body. There's really nothing around here that indicates, you know, a type of a bonding, uh, binding like the neck and the headstock. That would have looked really kick ass on this. The guy did a beautiful job at matching up these two pieces. Beautiful job is attaching it to the body of the guitar. I don't know what this is, is it swamp ash or what. The five piece neck, he did a fantastic job. It, this here where the glue is, that could have been corrected. Uh, I want to try to go after this and fix this myself, but I'd have to use acetone to do so. And I really don't want to change any more, excuse me, of the color that is between the two of these because they match so good. I don't want to sand into the wood and then re-clearing over it because that might have a different color, a different, you know, Something might be going on with it a little bit to where it'll be discolored and not match the rest. I don't want to do it. Even though it's got discoloration to it now, 
you know, that's it. So the problem that I had with this, and as far as the way it was hung on a hook, is that it is a polyurethane clear that was on this guitar. It still is, and it's still going to be, but it wasn't done right. The body had uh, an okay amount of clear on it, there was some exposed edges that weren't done right. So if he was, were to wet sand it and then polish it with a buffer, the edges wouldn't have felt rough, okay? Now these edges are nice and smooth now. And in some spots, I could see a little bit remnants of wood because of sanding the roughness out of the clear. And that may show up after I clear it or it might blend in, I'm not sure. That's why this part here, I'm not gonna do anything with. These areas over here are very small, so I mean, you probably won't even notice it or even see it. But the polyurethane sprayed on this body was built up a lot on this head. I don't know why there was so much on the headstock, but the indentation of the nuts and the screw or washers that were on the headstock uh, from the tuners, the indentation on the back from the tuners being mounted showed me that uh, it was squished, that the, you know you sandwich something between something that isn't quite dry and you're gonna have squeeze out from underneath it. And that's kind of what happened with this headstock. So it took me a bit to sand this down to a uh, minimum clear coat that wasn't going to have the same problem or issues again where it was gonna smear itself because it's still uh, not cured at the bottom. So here's the thing. This was done with a polyurethane, not done with a lacquer. In doing so, the polyurethane was sprayed heavy in certain areas and also uh, didn't give enough time for the polyurethane to cure or start getting cured before applying the next layers of clear building up a shell over something is not dried or hasn't fully dried correctly yet now i could spray polyurethane i give it 20 minutes 15 to 20 minutes in between coats light coats not heavy coats and then i keep building that up until i get to a point where i say okay i've got an amount of clear on here that i need that i know i'm going to end up sanding probably a clear and a half off of it doing level sanding uh, depending and there's still enough on there to buff without burning through all right and there's some cases where I'll put like 18 coats of clear on it and because I know I'm going to be sanding quite a bit off doing level sanding and stuff so with the shrinkage of the clear on top of the body over here and with this being built in 2005 which it shows on the back of the headstock there shouldn't be any more shrinking as far as any of the clear goes on the flame maple just give me that ripple effects where i see lines so when i started sanding this i could see lines of clear gloss and then flat clear flat clear flat and that's gone so i don't have that anymore headstock is the same way but the headstock didn't have a shrinkage as much as the body did like I said, there was a lot of clear up here. So now when I hit this with the clear that I'm gonna put on here, uh, everything's gonna get an even coat. And I give it time to kind of do its thing before I, I follow instructions, okay? Yeah, I read the can. Uh, let it cure up a little bit before applying and not applying heavy coats. That's how you do this. So when I do the fretboard over here, uh, as far as the uh, binding on each side. The binding has been exposed. It's wood. It's the same thing as what the top of this body is and the top of the headstock is. It's the flame maple. The only thing is doing the radius sanding on it, it exposed the top of the wood. So I have to mask off the, well it's not rosewood, it's something else. Uh, only leaving just this part here exposed when I clear cut it and give it a light dusting in order to seal up this and not have it raised up higher than what the fretboard is. So when I apply the frets to it, it's going to sit flat and not be raised up on each end with a gap in the middle 
because of the clear coat. So that'll be taken care of as well, but yeah. Filled in the holes on here. And as you can see, you know, these things are not even nowhere near straight. They're all crooked. I didn't take the body down too much as far as the clear, because like I said, there isn't that much clear on here. And everything else is pretty much taken care of. I got my hook on the back of it for hanging, and I'm ready to start spraying. So I'll be looking forward to that in the near future. All right, guys, you take it easy. Have a good one. Hope you guys learned a little bit on it over here. And uh, I will get into a video about the nitrocellulose lacquer and my first experience with it and what it turned out to be uh, under different types of climate change situations and what happens. Kind of interesting, and it is the reason why I don't use nitrocellulose lacquer as a clear coat anymore. All right, you guys, take it easy. Have a good one. I'll catch up with you later.